Check the description box below for tabs and backing tracks on my website, information about exactly what sound tools I'm using today, how to schedule one-on-one -on -one time with me, live streams and more on Patreon, and my deep dive courses. It's all on my website. Now we're not gonna really worry about that opening solo. I'm gonna tab that all out. What I wanna talk about today are intervals. I'm starting to realize, you know, I do a lot with the cage system and we're gonna talk about that today. Um, but really, if I think about what's behind everything, what's really informing the choices I make musically, it's intervals. So we're gonna deal with the natural minor intervals. We're gonna do E minor. And I've said this before, the, the cool thing about the cage system, the idea that, hey man, Every chord appears on the fretboard five ways, shaped like an E. And that, that would be the letter E in the word cage. That means that is gonna be the D-shaped E minor. That's another way that it appears. Again, if that was D minor, it would look like that, but because we're moving up the fretboard, this is a C-shaped E minor, because if this was a C, make it minor, there it is. This is all charted out. The charts are gonna be up on Patreon also. Everything is available. That's the future. We have the technology. That is a C shape. Let's see, that's the letter C. After that comes the letter A, which you know we know an A chord to look like that. We know an A minor looks like that, but if we bump, bump, boom, bam, boom, bam, boom, we got an E minor up there. We know a G chord looks like this. If it was G minor, it would be that. If I bump it way up to E, it's that. Or the top side, that's a little pro tip with the G-shaped structures. You're either going to choose the bottom four or the top four. Yeah. One more time. Again, let's look at those on the chart. There's an E minor. There's an E minor. There's an E minor. There's an E minor. There's one or there's one. And like, it really is like those, there it is. There is the 12 frets of E minor. That is going to hold the triads, the arpeggios, the intervals, which is what we're gonna talk about today, everything, the scales for E minor. And of course that changes when the chord changes, but there is no other way that those chords appear. Anybody who says otherwise is trying to make it more complicated as a means of gatekeeping. Cue the comments. So I say this all the time, that those caged structures hold things. I've, I've said many times they hold the pentatonic scale. If this is E minor, so wherever the chord is. There's our minor pentatonic, which is cool. But let's go a step further and get the full E natural minor scale, which is going to tell us the natural minor intervals, because that's going to really... if. Well, here we go. Everybody misses that note. And I, we're going to do this everywhere, but now let's name those. That's our root. That's a major second. That's a flat third. That's that interval. It's not just three because we're dealing with minors today. Yeah, in music theory, typically you do major first, but honestly, minor keys show up more uh, throughout world music, throughout the world. So I'm, I'm going minor first. Uh, major second, flat third, perfect fourth, perfect fifth, flat six, flat seven, and then we're back at our root. And every one of those has a personality, and we're gonna talk about how to kind of get a feel for that in a second root, major second, flat third, perfect fourth, perfect fifth, flat six, flat seven, and our root again. And I, you know, I, I think about this a lot because, well, hi, I'm Eric Haugen. I make YouTube videos for a living. Oftentimes folks will ask, Hey, could you say the note names when you play? Hey, could you say the fret names when you play? Why don't you say those things? And really, you want to know what is really going on inside this Muppet noggin. It's that. It's that information. I know what every one of those feels like. And so what 
what's an exercise that I, I recommend to get get this feel going to realize that when you're playing a scale and when you've memorized some dot diagram or some chart diagram that what you're really doing is playing these very important intervals relevant to you know the fundamental pitch i always say to do stuff like this groove and fill so one bar of grooving and then we're going to do a thing where we groove for one bar you know four beats and then we're going to play three of an interval and resolve it down What interval I'm playing. Let's play a, a two. To get a feel for how that sounds, fours. Let's go for that flat six. That flat seven. And the two again. Up to the three. The flat three, of course. The flat seven, going up. That seems like it's not that useful or exciting, but what's happening when you do that and you're not allowing yourself to noodle uh, around that natural minor scale, you're building a map, um, an intuitive map, and a connection with your ear and your hand, and it starts to know what that four feels like. So that like a lot of the, I'll, you know, I'll just level with you. A lot of the way I play is based on that kind of thing that like, um, you know, I'm putting a part together or thinking about something like, I'm just gonna go touch that interval. Like, where's that flat seven? Those, those things, you know, these things aren't just dots on a grid to me. Those intervals mean a lot to me. Um, and so that's, yeah, that's what today is all about. Let's go up to the next version of E minor. The caged D shape. And yeah, well, we'll, we'll talk about where's that natural minor scale. Now, let's see, root, major second, flat third, perfect fourth, perfect fifth, flat six flat seven root because again that's the root i know that you know some folks like to think of things all in reference to the relative major key i don't like to do that i think that's disrespectful to the tonal center of e minor i love minor keys too much to call these intervals as though they're from the key of g so same exercise groove it for a bar and then three of an interval that you're specifically targeting and thinking about and listening to, and then eh, I could resolve it up or down. Here we go. The four. Let's get that flat six. The two. The flat seven. Yep, it, it's, you know, I don't deal in hot licks. Um, and so, yeah, this, this is one of those exercises. It's a great exercise for when you don't know what you should be working on. Again, the lovely thing about this instrument is that it's supremely, let me see if I can get the light right. Yeah, there we go. Look at that thing. It's so big. Um, it's portable. Well, not this one. It's giant. Uh, but it's a portable, quiet instrument. If you're going to chill out at night like we most of us tend to do, Throw on some, you know, reruns in the background. For me, it's always Seinfeld. You don't even need to be plugged in. Just kind of working the stuff. Just kind of getting a feel for it. Where are those intervals? Feel them. Hear them. Because, you know, what, what pick up am I in? That one there. You know, you know, people say, hey, what's the most important thing? Uh, you know, what's the most important thing for a musician? Is it hands? Is it technique? Is it blah, 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 blah. It's the ear. It's the ear. Um... It totally is. Uh, okay, let's go up to the next version of E minor here. 
By the way, if you enjoy my work, please like, subscribe, and share. That costs you nothing, and that helps people like me out immensely. It really does. That's the way the world works now. All right, there's our E minor, our quote-unquote C shape. Where is our natural minor scale now? One, two, flat three, four, five, flat six, flat seven, root. Same exercise, groove it for a bar, and then three of an interval, and then move it somewhere else. Really, yeah, specifically targeting them and listening to them. That's my two. Four. Let's get that flat six. Let's get that flat seven. you know, putting guitar parts together in a song, this information is stored in my brain and in my hand that like, I, I just go grab them. I just go grab them when I want them. Um, I don't think I need to explain why that's useful. All right, if that was the C shape, we get our A shape, classic bar chord structure. All right, where is our natural minor scale now? Let's see. One, two, flat three, four, five, flat six, flat seven, root. Oh, let's keep going. Two, flat three, four, five, flat six, flat seven. Sure, we could do that if we want to. And again, the reason I say to keep things really um, clicked into one bar of this and being really deliberate and, you know, this instrument is so fun. There is something about the construction of the guitar that really does absolutely lend itself to noodling. It absolutely, something about like, you know, you're just looking down that, ew, this camera, we'll go to that camera. Yeah, you're just looking down that fretboard, those wires are like, oh, that, that was a nice couple of notes. Why don't you do a few more? Why don't you do a few more? Keep going, keep going. But I do think it's better for the map, for the ear, the heart, the brain, all the connective stuff. Um, to, to do it this way. Groove it and aim. There's my flat six. Groove it. Let's get that four. makes it so that later on when you're putting guitar parts together or playing to changes you have a real connection and a real feel for where those tones are that it's not just memorizing dots it's not just playing the dots it's really realizing that like there's a fundamental pitch that's resonating at that given time and you're like who do I want to just drop against that and see how it bumps into it it's like cooking it's, yeah, that's maybe the best analogy. It's like, add a little bit of smoked paprika in there. See what that does. Because it makes like what you do play, you feel it so much more when, when you're aware of it. And now let's just argue with myself. Hey, if you don't like music theory, that's valid too. Totally valid. I know plenty of people who play great stuff, don't know much what they're doing at all, but it sounds good to them. I know that. I know that. This is all very subjective. For me, this is how it works. This is how I feel it. This is what makes sense to me. But if you're on the other end of the screen, hey, how you doing? Um, and you're like, I, just can't, I don't care. I just play stuff. And like, if it sounds good, it sounds good. And if it doesn't, it doesn't. That's valid too. I totally think that's totally fine. It's just music. There is no right or wrong. That's kind of one of the nice things about it. It's just guitar. All right, let's get that last position. Again, we could do this side, or we could do that side of an E minor. Where is that natural minor scale now? So one, two, flat three, four, five, flat six, flat seven, root. Two, flat three, four, five, flat six, flat seven, root. I'm not 
going to work too hard to get that. Maybe I'll just do this. Two. Let's get that four. Let's get that five. Let's get that seven. Let's keep going. Let's get the two up high. Let's get that four. You know, side note, uh, some folks will ask, what about the nine, the 11, the 13? Let's do, well, let's stay in this position we were just doing. Just so you know, the way those work is, as a chord, that's a different thing. We're not going to worry about that. Sometimes you'll hear somebody call the two a nine and that's just like okay well if the root is here that's two flat three four five six, flat six flat seven root again which would be eight so the two once it gets past that octave is now a nine which yeah i i you know it's somewhat interchangeable for our purposes today you can call it a two you can call it a nine tell you all that, that that in a in a minor pentatonic the two intervals to add that really give it a lot of sauce a lot of zhuzh would be of course the blue note say we're down here the blue note is the flat five So though adding the nine to it is is a cool note that you can add to get a little more color it's not really a whole nother scale it's just a little more color stuff super cool stuff again hi i'm eric haugen i don't deal in hot licks but i do believe in in working on stuff like this when i think about it actually about what my brain is doing when i'm playing it's this it's a lot of this it's a lot of of this of of targeting specific things and being like where's the four i'm just gonna just go ahead and drop that down on this job done job done because for me i'd always rather be able to do that in a song and kind of just just add that little bit of friction where i want it rather than play a lot of notes because i cannot play a lot of notes cleanly can't do it here ready let's see That's the flashiest thing I know how to do, that little pull-off trick. Stupid, 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 stupid. Anyway, thanks so much to everybody who supports me in all the ways that you do one more time around the way it works. You can book one-on-one -on -one time with me. Man, I still love teaching people. Like, I know that, like, if I worked my business differently, I could be like, eh, I'll just do courses and this, that, the other thing. But it really is true when I meet with someone on the screen and I can just be like, What's going on? What are you doing? Oh, yeah, that's cool. Okay, well, have you thought about doing things this way? Anyway, I genuinely love teaching. There's also Patreon, which has live streams and charts and backing tracks. And that's kind of like a cool way to just kind of keep up with what I do on the regular. And that costs as little as $2 a month. So it's a pretty low commitment. Or there's deep dive courses that I make in partnership with the folks at truefire.com. But it's through my website that I actually make my revenue share off of those. So it's all on my website. You get to choose your level of engagement. And again, you don't have to do any of that. You don't have to do anything. But if you enjoyed this video this far, you could click like and subscribe. Because like I said, that costs you nothing. Helps me out a lot. Yo, shout out to my buddy Jonas. This is why I'm wearing his Rep Child shirt. He just made a really fun, campy horror movie. So I'm repping it a little bit today. Fun stuff, fun stuff. My, my buddy. All right. As Bill and Ted would say, be excellent to each other. That includes yourself. Happy Friday. Eat pizza.